Welcome to the 510 podcast. I am Heidi Matheson, and my goal in the next five to 10 minutes is to bring you some encouragement from the Word of God. In Ephesians 5 verse 10, Paul tells us to find out what pleases the Lord. And the writer of Hebrews says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. So together, let's strengthen our faith with the Word of God. The Chinese philosopher Laozi is credited with saying, if you do not change direction, you may end up where you're heading. A simple but very profound statement. Now, disclaimer, I'm not promoting Eastern religions or philosophy, but I do find this an interesting quote. One of my Bible school instructors from back in the 90s, Ross Medell, put it this way, every choice you make brings you one step closer to your future. Putting both of these quotes together in different words, we could say, are you making the kind of choices today that will create the future that you want tomorrow? Or are you happy with where you're heading? You see, every day brings new choices. And the choices that we make every day affect our future. The choices that we make every day are often made in a moment. Yet many of them will transcend our lifetime. Many of our choices have consequences for generations to come. Many of them even have eternal consequences. So again, are you happy with where you're heading? Now, I'm sure that you are aware that there is godly wisdom available to us. And what we need to do is ask for it. James chapter 1 verse 5 tells us, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives liberally to all and without reproach, and it will be given to him. God's wisdom is available to us. And the important thing to remember about this wisdom is that it comes from a place of omniscience. That means God knows everything from the past, the present, and the future. So when he gives us wisdom for choices and decisions, he is giving us good intel. He knows what's coming. He knows what's good for us. But he won't make the decisions for us. We have the free will to decide for ourselves. We can decide to follow God's ways or we can decide to do our own thing. And spoiler alert, deciding to do our own thing apart from God never ends well. Let's take a look at the life of King David, probably the most famous Israelite king. We read many stories about David making good choices, making godly decisions. God chose him as king over and above all his older siblings. He saved Israel by killing the giant Goliath. He was a prolific poet of worship. He wrote many of the Psalms. He was a musician whose music was able to soothe the ailing King Saul. Many times he was a victor in battles and in wars. He'd killed lions and bears while protecting his sheep. David was an all-round amazing guy who had a deep love for God. What could go wrong? Well, let's pick up David's story in 2 Samuel chapter 11 verses 1 to 5. It happened in the spring of the year. At the time when kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman bathing, and the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman, and someone said, Is this not Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers and took her. And she came to him, and he lay with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived, so she sent and told David, and said, I am with child. Oh dear. Not a wise choice on David's part. So rather than going out to battle as he should have done, he remained in his palace with nothing to do. Then he allowed his fleshly desires to get the better of him, and he took another man's wife. She ends up pregnant. 
the Bible goes on to describe a series of bad choices made by David. He tries to bring Bathsheba's husband Uriah home from the battlefront in the homes that he would sleep with his wife and then the baby could be passed off as Uriah's. However, Uriah is a loyal soldier and refuses to languish in the comforts of his home while his men are fighting in battle. So David devises a plan. He sends Uriah back to the front lines with a sealed letter for the commander of the army to put Uriah at the forefront of the hottest battle. And Uriah is killed. When Bathsheba's time of mourning her husband is over, David takes her in as his wife and she bears his son. But the Bible says in verse 27, the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. You know, sometimes I think that making bad choices is like eating a can of Pringles. You remember their tagline, once you pop, you just can't stop. After one bad decision, we then make another one to try and fix the first one. And on and on we go. David's first bad choice was to remain at home instead of going out to battle. Secondly, he allowed his eyes to linger on a beautiful woman who was not his wife. That led to David sleeping with her, the consequence, an illegitimate baby. And his final and most disturbing choice was to have Bathsheba's husband killed. One bad decision after another. Pop, pop, pop. But the sorrow created by David's bad choices doesn't even end there. In Second Samuel 12 verse 15 it says, The Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bore to David and it became ill. And then in verse 18, then on the seventh day, it came to pass that the child died. Now, we know that David had a close, intimate relationship with God. He would have known that what he was doing was very wrong. He must have ignored all the warning signs. And the consequences were severe. Bad choices bring bad consequences. David's life, Bathsheba's life, and Uriah's life would have been very different if David hadn't made that first bad choice. Friends, we need to carefully consider the choices that we make in our lives because we don't know how far-reaching the consequences could be. We don't know how much pain and suffering we're heading towards or how much pain and suffering we could cause others. We can't see the future. We can't see the destruction that we're causing with our current choices. But God does. He knows where our path is leading. He will give us wisdom to make the right choices. And all we have to do is ask and then obey. Now, we can't talk about this story without seeing God's goodness and redemption at the end. David realizes the error of his ways and he repents. And the Lord restores David and allows Bathsheba to conceive again and she gives birth to Solomon, who became the next king of Israel and was known as a very wise man. And in fact, Jesus, the Messiah, was born through the genealogical line of David and Bathsheba and Solomon. That is redemption. Friends, the number one aim is always to make right choices and right decisions. But God can restore and redeem us, even after a whole series of really bad choices. If we repent and turn from our sin, he can bring good out of the situation. As it says in Romans 8 verse 28, And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. But we will probably still have to go through the painful suffering caused by our bad choices. And others will also likely be affected. Others will also have to suffer hurt and pain because of our decisions. So I'll ask the question one more time. Are you happy with where you're heading? Or do you need to change direction? It's not too late. Let's make the decision today to strive every day to make good choices, godly choices, wise choices. And if we've missed the boat and started down a road of bad choices, let's make a decision to stop, to turn, to repent, and to allow God to take over. Thank you for listening. I hope you were encouraged today. 
You can find the 510 podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And if you found today's encouragement helpful, please subscribe and consider sharing it with a friend.